Are you all right, Noel? You've hardly touched your food. Sorry. I'm not very hungry. Even if you're not hungry, you should try and eat a little bit at least. You don't want your food to go to waste, do you? If you want it, you can have it, Dad. Now, now, don't give me that. There are people dying of hunger across the world, you know. At least you can do and appreciate the food that you have on your plate. You mustn't forget to be thankful. I am thankful, but not hungry. I prod at my nail meal with my chopsticks. I don't know what I'm eating. I have no idea what I've been putting into my mouth. Even though my dad is so good at cooking, I haven't been able to taste anything lately. What's the point of eating anyway? It won't change anything. It won't make my classmates nicer to me. It won't make life easier. It's just a waste of time. My mother looks at me with concern. She reaches across the table, pressing her hand against my forehead. Well, you don't seem to have a temperature. I'm not sick. I'm not just, I'm just not hungry. You haven't been eating properly for a while, though. Is everything all right? I look up at my mother, chopsticks clasped tightly on my hands. I grip them so hard I'm sure there will be red marks engraved into my palms when I let go. My scalp still hurts from earlier. That girl was so violent I think she pulled out some of my hair. Is it because my hair is this funny color? Is it because my eyes are blue? Is it because my mother isn't Japanese? Is that why I get bullied? It's not my fault. It isn't. It's my mother's, isn't it? Why does she look all wrong? If she looked like all the other mothers, I wouldn't look so weird. I wouldn't stand out. So far, I wouldn't get picked on. Maybe I could have a happy life if I had a normal mother. But at the moment I think this, I start to feel guilty. My stomach hurts. I feel sick. My mother is a nice person. She cares about me. She brushes my hair every single morning before she sends me off to school. How could I hate her? This isn't her fault. I... I don't want to hate her. I don't want to hate anyone. Dear? What is it? What's wrong? I look up into my mother's eyes, my body trembling. My grip on my chopsticks tightens. My heart starts beating faster and faster. I take a deep breath and say in a rush, expelling it from my body as though it's something poisonous. If I don't say it quickly, I'll lose what little courage I have and then I won't be able to go through with it. So I say it fast, stumbling over the words as I do so. I... I... I think I'm being bullied at school. I was naive. My mother complained to the school, and in turn, our homeroom teacher gives a very strict talk about bullying. My class was given a punishment, too. We were made to clean out the old swimming pool. Of course, everybody knew it was my fault. I was the only person in class being bullied, after all. Who else there was there to blame? And so it got worse. Oh, no. <laughs> It isn't fair. Why is it always me? I sit with my knees tucked up under my chin, arms wrapped around my legs. My nose is filled with the comforting aroma of sawdust while my bare toes curled up amongst the straw and old newspapers. It feels nice and strangely soothing. I don't know where my shoes are. I think I kicked them off before I came inside. I'm sitting in a large rabbit hutch where the school rabbits are housed. There are several rabbits, some with some white ones, some brown ones, and a black one with floppy ears. Their twitchy noses and fluffy tails, like balls of cotton wool, are so cute. The way they scamper over to me, staring up at me with those big eyes. They make it seem makes it seem like they almost like they understand me. 
are the only ones who listen to me. Are the only ones who care. I guess this means you're my only friends, huh? They're supposed to be the school pets. There's a schedule. Each class gets to take care of them for a week. All of the kids in my class were excited by this at first. They soon began to lose interest. The thought of taking care of rabbits was an extra burden, just like cleaning up the classroom. After a while, they stopped coming here. Even though it's our class's turn to look after the rabbits, nobody is here but me. I'm the only one who still bothers. It's not like I dislike that, though. Rather, it makes me happy. At least the rabbits like me. At least they don't make fun of me. They don't pinch me or tear up my homework or whisper behind my back. I yawn, resting my head between them against my knees. I don't know how long I've been here. It must be quite a while. Maybe an hour. Maybe more. Who knows? It's starting to get dark outside and it's cold too. I should go home. If I don't hurry, my parents will get worried about me. If they get worried about me, they might phone the school again and ask my teacher to check up on me. And if that happens, I shudder. I don't want that to happen. I can't let that happen. But at the same time, I don't want to move. People in my class sometimes wait for me outside the school gates. They wait and then they ambush me, calling me names, kicking at my bag, trying to steal my shoes. They can be surprisingly persistent, too. Once they waited for me by the gates for more than an hour. I thought I was safe hanging around in the restroom for that long, but I was wrong. They were meaner to me that day because I made them wait longer. Abusing me has really become a sport at this point, hasn't it? Even the people who aren't in my class do it. It brings people together. They have a nice, fun, happy time wearing such bright smiles as they make fun of me endlessly. It's not fair. I want to have fun too. Why am I the only one? Why is it just me? You guys are the only friends I have. You're the only ones who will listen to me. The rabbits look at me, their noses twitching. I think they understand. <laughs> You're so little and cute. Looking at you makes me feel better. I smile, stroking one of the white rabbits with my trembling hand. It doesn't run away. When I first started to visit them, they were wary of me, backing into the far corners of their cage and looking at me with untrusting eyes. It's different now. They've opened up to me and they've let me touch them. They let me stroke them. It's a sign they accept me. It's proof that they really are my friends. Rabbits are so much better than people. The bullying is even worse than usual today. Every day it increases. The bullies get more and more confident as they find more and more things they can get away with. Wanting to test just how far they can push it, their acts of cruelty escalate even further. I can't do a thing. I'm powerless to stop it. Every night before I go to bed, I pray that something bad will happen to the bullies. I pray they'll all come down with the flu, fall down the stairs, and even die in a traffic accident. I don't care what it is. I just want them to leave me alone. Maybe this is why I'm being punished. It's because I'm a bad person who has wicked thoughts. Maybe I deserve it. In my classroom, along with the rest of the girls, we're meant to be getting changed for a swimming lesson. I hate getting changed here with everybody else. Usually I get changed by myself in the toilets, but the P.E. teacher caught me doing it last time and she scolded me. She said I wasn't meant to get changed there, it was dirty, and no wonder the other children don't like you if you keep avoiding one like that. I have to get changed to the classroom now. If I don't, I could get into a lot of trouble, but, but, I made a mistake. Being punished by a scary teacher would be far less humiliating than this. One of the girls has stolen my swimsuit. She's holding it aloft, high above my head. I can't reach it. Even if I jump, I wouldn't be able to catch it. I stand in the middle of my classroom, my whole body shaking. 
Everybody watches me laughing. Those who aren't laughing have sad, pitying looks in their eyes. But they don't offer to help. Nobody ever does. Of course they don't. If they did, they'd just get bullied too. I can't blame them. If I was in their situation, I would do exactly the same thing. I don't want to get bullied either. Look at her. She's so pathetic. Oh, she looks like she's gonna cry. And look at her underwear. God, you're right. It's so dirty. When was the last time you washed your underwear, anyway? I don't know, I don't know. Not dirty. Why does everybody keep saying that? Why do they look at me like that? What did I do wrong? Leave me alone, just leave me alone. Hey. Since we're going swimming, you don't need to wear those, do you? Huh? What does that mean? They can't really be suggesting. Besides, they're so dirty anyway. Who'd want to wear those? We're doing you a favor. Yeah, it's because we're so kind. We're being nice to you. Sure, let me help you. Take them off, take them off. No. Stop it. I cry in alarm and huddle up on myself, wrapping my arms around my body. It doesn't make any difference. I can't stop it. I can't fight it. I can't do a single thing. It's because I'm weak. Why am I so weak? I sit on the toilet seat, sealed up in a small cubicle. This is the only safe haven left for me in the school building, even though it smells bad and there's damp toilet paper stuck to the floor. I used to go to the library till lunchtime, but that's not an option anymore. I guess the kids in my class must really miss me. They get so lonely eating lunch in the classroom without me that they had to go and search for me. Yeah. It really must be boring, eating the lunch your parents made for you with your friends, laughing and talking. To truly entertain yourself, you need to have somebody to bully. I see how it is. I exist for the amusement of others. If I'm not there, everybody gets restless. For the sake of others, I'm sacrificed. I made it into the sacrifice so everyone else can have fun. Because I'm bullied, nobody else has to be. It's good for the class. A group of kids banded together and they searched around the school for my hiding place. It didn't take them very long to find it. The library is hardly a secret base tucked away from the public eye. Naturally, it's the first place they checked. They dragged me away, smiling at the librarian the whole time. They told her that they were my friends and they'd come to play with me. She believed them. Of course she did. She wouldn't say anything. I couldn't say anything in response. Once they found me, they brought me back to the classroom and then harassed me. They kept bringing up the incident from a couple weeks ago over and over again. Show us your underwear, Sakata. I heard it was really dirty. I want to see. It's not because we're being mean to you, okay? We're just checking up on you. We're worried about you. Come, Come on. on. Show us, show us. We're your friends, show us. Pretending that they were my friends. They were really clever. They were far too clever for me, who was all alone and isolated. When I refused, tugging at the hem of my skirt, my eyes filled with tears, they laughed. They laughed and somebody, maybe several people, started to throw bits at their lunch at me. I can't go back to the library now. Not anymore. It isn't safe. The only place I can go during lunch is here. The smelly, cramped, claustrophobic space where I end up sitting on the lid of a toilet. I sniffle, wiping my eyes with my sleeve, trying to stem my tears. Maybe if I cry in here, people will mistake me for a vengeful demon. Huh. Who am I kidding? It's not like that'll ever happen. I don't have any powers. I can't protect myself. I can't do anything. I pick at the food that my father prepared for me. 
I'm sure it tastes good, but since I'm sitting in such a dismal place all by myself, I can't enjoy it. It tastes salty for my tears. But, Dad, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that I wasted this meal you made by eating it in a place like this. I bet you're thinking that I'm eating it in a classroom surrounded by my friends and we're having a good time. But that isn't true. Nothing could be further from the truth. I'm sorry. I'm sorry you had to prepare food for a child as worthless as I am. I'm sorry your daughter ended up so pathetic. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I... Hey! This place is gross! Oh, that's probably a woman. Well, you're pretty. You're a pretty girl. Yeah! Totally rank. Doesn't anybody ever clean up in here? Oh. I can hear voices. There are people in here. They sound like girls from my class. I try to remain as still and silent as possible, curling myself up into a ball. I don't even want to breathe. The slightest sound and they'll hear me. They'll hear me, they'll drag me out, and then... I squeeze my eyes shut tightly, shaking my head. I don't even want to think about it. I guess this is why everyone uses the restroom on the second floor instead. Yeah, that's much nicer. But way more crowded. If we went there, everybody would hear us. That's right, that's right. Nobody can hear about this. I'm starting to get excited. <laughs> oh. I... I don't want to get in trouble, though. Don't worry, you won't. It's not like anybody will know it was us, right? But, but... I can't help but feel sorry for Cicada. Huh? They're talking about me? Don't feel sorry for her. She gets bullied because she deserves it. Really? She's always so quiet, though. That's exactly my point. She's always looking down on us, acting like she's better than everyone, just because her parents are a little bit rich. She always wears such fancy -like clothes and looks at us so scornfully. It pisses me off. Yeah. She never even tries to join in. It makes me mad. Like, who does she think she is? Even when we tried to be nice to her, she never listened to us. I guess. I... I can't believe it. Is it really? My fault? I am being bullied? Because I deserve it? Am I really that bad? Is being quiet such a bad thing? She's such a freak. She, maybe she can't even talk. Maybe that's why she never says anything. That might be it. That might be it. <laughs> well, we don't want to want that stupid girl in our class anymore. Just seeing her face in the morning puts me in a bad mood. Seriously. We're going to drive her out. We'll harass her so much she'll never show her face around here again. Ugh. I let out a small gasp. I can't help it. Hastily, I put my hands over my mouth. Trying to stifle the sound, but of course I made a mistake. I forget one crucial thing. My lunchbox sitting in my lap. A sudden movement jolts it, knocking it aside. The plastic bots hit the tiled floor with an audible thud. Food spills everywhere across the watered, soaked, tissue-smeared ground. I'm so stupid. Hey! What the hell was that? They've heard me. Somebody must be here. Someone was listening to us. They're inside one of the stalls. What if they tell a teacher? I don't want to be punished. Let's find them. Break down the door and pull them out. People who sneak around like that deserve to be punished. I sit there, frozen. My whole body trembles. I can hear my heart beating louder, louder inside my chest. It's so loud, so violent, I'm surprised it hasn't burst yet. No. I want it to burst. If it burst, I won't have to face the consequences. Being dead would probably be safer than being alive. At least that way nobody could hurt me. I wish I was dead. Right here, right now, sitting in this cramped toilet cubicle, I wish I was dead.
I hate it. I hate it. I sit with the rab I sit in the rabbit hutch with my knees tucked under my chin and my arms around my legs. Not even the small the smell of sawdust or the straw between my toes can comfort me now. Nothing can. Why am I even alive anyway? What's the point in existing in this world? If I'm just going to get abused like this. If this is how my life is going to be, then I don't want to live anymore. I sit there, head hanging, holding an object in my hand. Oh no, honey. Oh no, honey. Is she gonna... I really hope not. Oh, fuck. I don't even want to read this, but we gotta... Mm. Alright. Uh, a white plastic object. At a glance, it looks innocent, unassuming, but... If you slide it from the bottom, you'll find a sh sharp metal blade. It's a box cutter. I stole it from the art classroom, tucking it away inside my school bag. My parents are good people. They always told me stealing is wrong. They said if I stole anything, I'd become a criminal, and criminals are bad people. I don't want to be a bad person, so I feel guilty for taking it. But why am I the bad person? when I'm the one who's always being bullied. Surely the bullies are worse than me. Ah, but maybe. Maybe they bully me because I'm bad. Maybe they know I have cruel thoughts and I want them to die. So they target me. It's because I deserve it. Bullying might be a bad thing to do, but maybe it's okay to pe bully people who are bad themselves. Is that how it works? I'm sure if I die, I'll make a lot of people happy. They won't have to be angry anymore. It's for the best. Even though stealing this box cutter was bad, if I use it properly, then I'll be doing something good. I don't want to think anymore. I'm tired of thinking. It doesn't help me anyway, so there's no point. There's no point in anything. I'll end it. I'll end it right now, and I'll never have to feel bad again. I hold the box cutter in my hand tightly. It hurts my fingers, but I don't mind. This little bit of pain is nothing. I extend the blade from the plastic case and marvel at how shiny it is. I could do it. And I will. That's what I tell myself, but my fingers start to shake. My heart beats a little faster. I start to feel scared. I... I don't really want to be in pain. I don't want to be hurt, but I don't know how else to stop it. I'm hurting already, aren't I? This much pain is nothing, right? I remember. One time when I was helping my mother cook, I cut my finger with the knife. It really hurt. My finger blood. It was bright red. I don't want that to happen again. I do, but I don't. I don't, yet I do. It's all mixed up and confused and it hurts. It hurts too much. I feel like my head's going to explode. I look at the rabbits, imploring them. Please, tell me what to do. But they don't tell me. Of course they don't. They can't talk. I thought they were my friends. I thought they understood me. But wasn't that ridiculous? Wasn't that naive? Of course they can't understand. They can't understand because they're not human. Only people can help people, but it's too late for me already. I've already been abandoned. Rabbits can't do a thing. In that case, they're worthless. These creatures that I called my friends are all worthless. Why are they even alive? If they can't help me, then they should just die. I don't want to die. I'm already in pain. I don't want to hurt anymore. That isn't fair. It's those who are happy, those who don't know suffering, who need to be taught a lesson. If everybody knew how much being bullied hurts, then they wouldn't bully anyone. If everyone could share my pain, the world would become a much better place. Surely, that's the real solution. Everyone should be in pain. No one should be excluded. No one. It's not fair. I'm tired of being the only one who hurts. I don't want to be the only one. 
I don't want to be alone. Why is it always me? My eyes are leaking. My vision is blurred. My nose is dripping snot. My, ch my chest rises and falls. I try to breathe in, but my lungs don't seem to be cooperating. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. I feel like I'm going to suffocate. I'm going to collapse. I'll die. I'll really die. But I can't stop myself. I keep on crying. My fingers. They feel wet and warm. Why is that? How did it happen? I don't know. I don't know anything. After that, I didn't have to go to school anymore. Or to be more precise, I wasn't allowed to go back to school anymore. That's why my parents decided to move. And so, when I was nine, I ended up coming here to this small village. I look at Noel in shock. I'm not sure how to react. I had assumed her childhood was bleak, but I had no idea it would be anywhere as bad as that. I must be a truly privileged person. And end up until uh, end up until today. I didn't even realize it. I've never even bullied Noel like like I've never been bullied like Noel has. The playful jokes and slaps on the back, courtesy of Amu, are nothing compared to that. I had no idea people could be so cruel. Noel blinks. Although she told me such a grim story, she doesn't look particularly sad. Instead, she looks strangely hollow, like a filleted fish. This absence of emotion is even more troubling than real grief would be. At least, I'd know how to react to that. If she cried, I could offer her a tissue. I always carry tissues around me, after all. Or a pat on the shoulder. Maybe a hug, but since she hasn't reacted at all, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. When you say that, Alchon, are you talking about me? N no, of course not. W why would I be talking about you? Because I was cruel. Don't you think I was cruel? Don't you? Are you talking about the rabbits? Mm. I search around for words, groping in the dark. This is clearly a delicate subject matter. I'm not sure how to approach it. Were the rabbits badly injured? Yes. How badly? Badly enough that they stopped moving. I draw a sharp intake of breath. It's just as I thought. You mean, you killed them? I think so. Most likely. I can't exactly remember. When I think back to it, I... I don't know what I did. Not entirely. It's as though part of my brain is completely blank. Like a videotape that's been recorded over. And yet, as I watch her closely, it becomes more and more apparent. Her shoulders are shaking. My father taped over my one of my video once with a baseball game. I didn't want to be a bother, so I didn't mention it, but it was still upsetting. It was the same kind of thing back then. But I do know, when I came to my senses, I was sitting in the rabbit hutch. I was holding the box cutter in my hands, and my fingers were bright red. Ah, no, that's a lie. Not just that. The hutch as well. Everywhere. It was on my clothes and in my hair and across the floor. There was bright red. All over. Everywhere. And the rabbits. 
thing. The rabbits were lying there, twitching, covered in cuts so deep I could see all the way inside of them. All the way inside. I'd never seen anything like that before. It was soft and wet and spongy and pink, like something from a horror movie. They didn't look real. But their eyes were dark black and their noses, their noses were still twitching. They, they were still alive. They were still alive, but they were in so much pain and I couldn't even make a sound. And then they died. They died slowly in agony while I sat there and watched. It was all my fault, all my fault. I think about it most days, almost every single day unless I'm being unusually forgetful. I always remember to remember again eventually though. Sometimes if I think that if I try hard enough I'll remember exactly what happened. I'll understand what it was I did and why, but there's a dark fog inside my mind. I can't remember. No matter how hard I try, I just can't. I can't. Noel. I am a bad person, aren't I? Only a bad person would do something so cruel. N no, I... I think it was cruel, but you're not bad. I am. Horribly bad. I'm the worst. Noelle ad administers herself harshly, her body bent forwards under the weight of her own words. And yet, although they're vicious, judgmental, without a single trace of forgiveness, her voice still sounds empty. It's almost as though she's reading from a script. Because I was being bullied, I felt helpless. I felt helpless and backed into a corner and so, I lashed out in anger. I was self-righteous. I thought I was, I deserved to be angry. But the rabbits who had never done anything wrong, who I considered my friends, were the only ones I could hurt. They were too weak to resist. They couldn't get away. And so I hurt them. For my own self-satisfaction, I hurt them. I am a bad person. Unforgivably bad. I don't know what to say. This seems to be a reoccurring theme lately. I have to grope around the inner dark darker recesses of my brain sweeping back cobwebs and chasing away spiders before I'm able to formulate a reply. I, is that why you thought when I left I was ignoring you because I didn't like you? Noelle nods her head. She moved jerkily like a clockwork toy. Yes, because I am a bad person, so I deserve to be disliked. Hmm. Wow. That Explains. hurt me in places that I don't even want to talk about. Like, I actually started crying a little bit during reading some of that. That explains a lot. Yeah. I want to hug her, and she doesn't even exist. Man, this, this is... This is some... This is deep, man. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, I'm, I'm, I just need to end. I'm, I need yeah. a minute. Yeah.